Hello, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Lama Muir One. Um, I'm Esther Stringer, Managing Director of Border Crossing UX, and I'm delighted to be in this room today because I have the best room. And it continues. We started off with um, some subatomic particles. We moved into quantum. And now we're moving into equity and in how we can actually make a change and a difference. And I am delighted to introduce you to clearly a formidable woman, Tony Scullion, who is a computing science teacher, stacks lead, and the founder at Dress Code. And the reason I'm delighted is because she does something which I am hugely passionate about, because the aim of Dress Code is to help close the gender gap in computing science and help increase the uptake of computing science at school level, which, quite frankly, is what we need to build a better and brighter future. So without further ado, let's give a big, big warm welcome to Tony. Thank you very much, Tony. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. That was really kind. Um, so yeah, I'll just get started. Thanks for turning up. I thought there'd be no one in my room. <laughs> um, so yeah, my name is Tony Scullion. I'm a computer science teacher, founder of the charity Dress Code, which is a non-profit, and I'll tell you a little bit about that later on. I'm also co-founder of the Ada.Scot Festival, and I'm also co-lead of the current Scottish government project called Stacks, which is Scottish teachers advancing computer science. So I actually come here today more with a problem and hoping that you lot can give me some insight on how to fix it. And I'll also share what we're doing to try and fix it as well. So it's the Scottish coding conundrum. And this is Think you know Scotland. That, oh, that's one slide to ahead. Think again. Don't know why it's doing that. Hang on, I'll flick quickly. Um, it's the Scottish coding conundrum. So it's something that Scotland have been facing for a very long time. And you'll see the statistics here as well. But we're going to kick off with a video. Think technology. Think tech companies all over Scotland changing the game and reshaping the future. Then think of a sector growing fast. A country that is forward thinking in everything it does. Think satellite technology tackling climate change. Think turning light into wireless data. Think the data capital of Europe. Think data science and data helping to tackle childhood obesity. Think a globally recognised top fintech hub that's the driving force behind inclusive and ethical finance and transforming the future. Think world firsts. Think using our thinking to change people's lives and the world. Think artificial intelligence helping doctors to monitor patients' health on and off hospital wards. UK's first spaceport is set to launch in the early 2020s, making Scotland the only location in Europe with end-to-end -end launch capabilities. It's better than even's chance the next billion dollar startup to come out of Edinburgh is currently a tenant in code base. Think startups, think scale ups, think the next big thing, think inventions changing the world, think world leading research and the most innovative thinkers working with you. Think networks of talent and networks to support you. Now think of your business, your future, your opportunities. Think different, think Scotland. Scotland is now. Now, I love that video. I think it's so hard not to watch and feel like totally geared up thinking Scotland's amazing and Scotland's tech sector is amazing and it's something we should all be so proud of. But there's one critical error. <laughs> I know I like that. <laughs> but there's one critical error and it's the pipeline. So we know that industry are facing these challenges. So there was a recent report by Scotland Is that said that we usually need around 13,000 graduates going into the digital tech sector. But as a country, we're only producing around 5,000. So that is a staggering, like, staggering difference, you know? So we've got a huge shortfall already at the university level. So that probably gives some insight into why industry are struggling trying to recruit. But I'm going to go further than that. So we know that the pipeline starts in the classroom. It starts from primary right up to secondary, and those are your people who then go into college, university, or the apprenticeship scheme that then lead into the tech sector. Now, to start, first try and solve a problem, you really need to understand the challenges and talk about the challenges and then come together and try and fix this. So I'm going to have a little look at the computing science landscape. So this is the subject of computing science in schools in Scotland. So if we go back to 2001, there's currently no data that I could find at least a reliable source for the number of teachers. But when we're looking at the number of pupils studying the subject, there used to be around 28,000 pupils studying the subject. That's, that's brilliant. And then females, we had around 9,800. And then in 2008, we had 766 teachers. But what you can see is the number of uptake, uptake slowly declines. 
and the gender gap gets bigger. And again, you can see this trend continues with a drop in teacher numbers, a drop in the pupils studying the subject overall, and a drop in the female studying the subject. And then in 2019, the same thing continues. So all of these figures I'm showing, it's nothing new. It's, it's a problem that's been around for a very long time. And then continuing a drop in the gender gap as well. So I think those figures are really, really shocking. But then in 2023, we've got 588 teachers. And you can see a slight increase in uptake and gender. So you would, you would be forgiven to thinking, oh, well, we're fine, we're doing all right, we're recovering, we're on the way up. And it is good news, and we should recognise that good news. But I want to put that into context. So it's taken four years to get those figures. And if you put it into context, it is only around an extra 200 pupils studying the subjects. But we've actually got 357 secondary schools in Scotland. So that's less than one person per school over the course of four years. So it is progress, but it's very small progress. So we're going in the right direction. Now, if we continue to go in this direction at that speed, we will not reach the levels that we had in 2010 for around 50 years. So it'll be 2077 when we see the uptake meet that level and 2072 when we see the number of females. If we go to 2008 and we try and meet that level at the pace that we're going, it's going to take around 69 years to get there. And then to meet the level that we had in 2001, it's going to take more than 80 years. Now that's within my lifetime. No, not within my lifetime. <laughs> you can see I've practiced this stuff. Um, that's not within my lifetime. Like, and so it is just to put into context, although you see those figures, it really is only one person, like one per school, not even one per school, taking four years to get there. And the progress isn't good enough for what Scotland are trying to achieve. So Scotland are trying to be a digital nation. And, and I think we've got very good progress and I think we can absolutely do it. And everybody loves an underdog. Computing science is the underdog. So it's no real surprise when you see these headlines Computing facing staffing meltdown. Warning over skills gap in computing. Computing science teaching in decline. Expert calls for revamp of digital teaching in schools. Interest is there, but the teachers are not. And Mark Logan declares computer science education emergency. However, these headlines, some have been written as early as 2012, over a decade ago. So these, this story I'm telling, it's nothing new. All the figures are public. We've known about it for more than a decade. The writing has been on the wall for a very, very long time. So you might think, right, well, what's going on with that? You know, especially the recruitment. We all know that the recruitment in teaching is really difficult right now. And Professor Judy Robertson from the Edinburgh University, she done a study around computing science teachers and she found that we actually only need 50 or 60 new computing science teachers every year to have a sustainable computing science um, teaching, but then also that means having like thriving computing science departments across the country, which ultimately leads to access to more pupils. That's 50 or 60 people out of 5,000. That's all we need. So looking at the recruitment, of 2022 and keeping in context with all the other STEM subjects. You've got math teachers and then the target. So the target is the number of teachers that we try and get every year. And then the probationer intake. So that's the new teachers coming through. And then biology, chemistry, <coughs> physics and computing. So again, we know that computing science has got the least amount of teachers and has done for a very long time. We're trying to get 50, which is great to see having that target, the recommendation that Judy had, but we're only getting 26, 26 out of 5,000. For me, I'm pretty optimistic. I think we can get another 26 out of 5,000, surely, as a country. So I think that's pretty achievable. 
but there's something we need to bear in mind, that the lowest number of computing science teachers we have ever had on record is 579. We are nine teachers away from that. So the subject is in such a delicate position. And we know that the, having computing science teachers is absolutely key to achieving all the success that we need as a country. So to become a computing science teacher or a teacher, if you don't know anybody, you first have to have a degree and then you have to do a year's teacher training. So to become a maths teacher, a biology, chemistry or physics teacher, you can study at seven or eight universities across Scotland. To become a computing science teacher, you can only study at three and two are in the same city. So that impacts greatly if you have got a family and whatever, and you can't physically move to those places. So there is part-time courses available for all of them, but it's over two years. And let's face it, when you've got someone who wants to become teaching, we really need to encourage them and be like, please come be a teacher. Because it, what computing faces and STEM faces is we're competing with the same talent that the tech sector want. And we know it's more paid and we know it's probably better conditions and so on. So it's something that we really need to work at as a country. And we know that we've got the biggest gender gap and we have had the biggest gender gap compared to the other traditional STEM subjects for over a decade. So looking at the current figures, again, we've got the STEM subjects, computing's at the bottom, uptake, and then we've broken that down into gender. So these are the recent figures from 2023. So you can see that computing science uptake, you know, we're, we're, <laughs> we're massively behind everybody else. And then the gender gap as well is huge. And this is something that just continues at higher as well. So the uptake's still struggling and the gender gap's still widening by a huge amount. 670 female pupils across 357 schools, 32 councils, we can only inspire 670. Now remember, those aren't the number of people who go into the tech sector, those are just people who are studying the subject. So this is just the entry level, it's not, not the um, attainment or people who have passed, it's just the people who have sat the exam. And then advanced higher. So this is the stark reality that Scotland is facing. We're not only struggling to inspire people to choose the subject in the first place, we're struggling to continue to persuade them to continue to pursue the subject and ultimately to consider a career in the tech sector. Now that's not all the challenges I'm afraid. It's not a core subject and it's not a practical subject. So what that means, it's not a core subject means it is not taught in every secondary school in Scotland right now. And when I say that a lot of people think I'm just talking about the Highlands, I'm not, it's the central belt as well. So you could genuinely have schools next to each other separated by a postcode. One person gets access to it, the other person doesn't. And in a practical subject, what that means in teacher terms is 20 per class in BG, so first, second and third year. It's not classed as a practical subject. So what that means is you can have more than 20 pupils in a class, but you don't have 20 desktops to teach them. So they'll, ha they'll have kids sitting in a class with a, desk a laptop. So that obviously is going to impact the, the pupil experience as well. But there's more. The equity of access isn't there. So for, teacher, uh, for schools that have got computing science, on the surface, you might be like, oh, they've got it, it's fine. But when you start to look further, you might have one school that gets access to computing science in S1, S2 and S3, which is fantastic. But then you might have another school that gets no computing science at all in S1 and only gets in S2 and S3. And then of course, don't forget about the people who have got no computing access at all. So for those pupils, it's not even that the door to computing science is closed, it's that there is no door. And then it's not always delivered by a specialist. So business teachers really help us out here and I honestly hats off to them, I think they're absolutely amazing because delivering another subject that isn't your own is really difficult to do. And I've had first-hand experience of this. So a school that I taught and I had to deliver business and business had to teach computing, so it, it rotates. And then you might think there's so many cool tools out there and there really is so many cool tools out there that teachers want to use. So it should be easy to just inspire kids. Like there's great websites out there. But the problem is teachers aren't able to get access to the software that they need. 
Now, this is an educational problem, but computing science feel this more than any other subject, just to the nature of the subject we are. So an example is Scratch. Like, I think most people have heard of Scratch. So you could have a school that is able to use Scratch online, and it's amazing, but then again, a school just down the road, separated by a few miles, that have to use the offline version, or something totally alternative. So even in this day and age, we've got pupils learning web using Notepad. Like, I used Notepad when I was young, like, but then you've got the power of creating something incredible on your phone, like, and seeing it instantly instead of this saving it, dragging it, dropping it, shoving it in a folder, you know, and it's, again, it's that experience. And it's because we've got a DPIA problem. So we call it the DPIA, uh, DPIA dilemma. <laughs> and then you might think, again, there's so much cool kit out there. And there, again, there is. There's Seferos, Makey Makeys, Marty the Robots. But because we've got such small numbers of computing science teachers, what this means is the, the size of budget you get is pretty small. Because a lot of the departments are only one or two members. So it means that one school might be very fortunate and can afford a full class set of kit but then another school isn't able to. And so they might have to buy like two or three every year. And then the real kicker is if you want to study computing science at university, you don't even need to do computing science as a subject. Like that's mad. Like, do you know what I mean? Like if you really think about, again, thinking about physics, chemistry, maths, biology, it would never happen. But for computing it does. And the reasons, and I fully understand the reasons for university, is because the talent wasn't coming through. But this poses a problem for schools. So like, I've been on the receiving end of parents' night and you're trying to convince people to study the subject. But pupils will, will look or parents will look and they realise, oh, my kid doesn't need it. So they'll pick an, an easier subject instead. So you might be thinking, like, like great. <laughs> is there any good news? Like, we've known about this. Like, what's actually happening? And there is some good news and there's pockets of excellence there. So I said at the start, I'm a founder of the non-profit charity Dress Code. Now, this is something I started 12 years ago, so when I first started teaching, and it's officially been a charity for about six years now. And it was because I saw firsthand girls not picking the subject, and I was like, that's not okay. And I found that very difficult to deal with because I'm a female and I love computing. So it was something that, from the very, very early on, when I started teaching, I thought, you know what, I'm going to change this. <laughs> and so it's kind of grown arms and legs. So th this is one of the first ever coding clubs that I ran. Um, and yeah, like it's easier to just show you what dress code is than talk about it. So I think it's important to inspire young females, especially in the technology industry, because again, research has shown that the females are underrepresented. So what we're trying to do in this school is we want to try and close the gender gap. And I know that's a big goal, but we feel like we should aim high. I think more females should try and get into it because it is something that you will need in the future because nowadays it's all just technology, everything's online and it's exciting because you learn new things every single day when you're doing it. It's team building, it's cooperative learning, it's working collaboratively, it's communication and it's problem solving and hopefully by the end of this year um, we'll actually have games that they can be like, do you know what, I made that. You know, you can develop a game, you can make it do whatever you want, but you just need a sprinkle of magical code to do that. I love to see that excitement and that eureka moment of, wow. It makes you really happy when you finally get it to work and you realise you can do anything. You can make characters move, you can make a game. It's, it is really rewarding. Everybody can do it if they want to do it. It doesn't matter if you're a boy or a girl. Some girls have got it in their head that no, I can't do it because I'm not a boy or I think it's not for me. But they don't know until they try it and they're not giving themselves a the chance to try it. Coding such a core fundamental skill that if you can get them in an early age, then hopefully the girls can then be empowered and feel, you know, I've got the confidence to actually just code and, and like change the world, which is exciting. And I know that sounds really cheesy, but like, but you totally can. If you can code, you can change the world. So that's dress code. And it was only ever meant to be a coding club. And now it gets run across other schools, which is amazing. Like, it's really strange, but amazing to see. And it's amazing to see schools also, like, reaping that benefit of closing the gender gap within their local area. So this is a picture um, of St Nins in East Rain, one of the largest dress code clubs that we know. And it's run by Sarah Jenkins. So if there is anybody who's looking for a school, like, visit them. Like, it's amazing. Like, they're honestly amazing.
But a big part of everything that Jesco done was about role models. And we know that research says that role models are so important for um, pupils in general to try and inspire people and have people to look up to. So it was only ever meant to be a dress code club. But then every year I became obsessed with this data and watching the subject just nosedive and the gap getting bigger. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to see what else we can do. So we did. So we also create role model posters. Now these posters are of pupils. So it's having your peers on the wall in the classroom and their reasons why they choose computing science as well. And then we also run hackathons. So this is a recent hackathon that we had in collaboration with Morgan Stanley. Again, um, having girls from other schools just again, like coming and coding. It doesn't matter if they've never coded before, but they can code. And then the girls in yellow are the senior role models. So again, having that role model thing is so important and a big part of dress code. And then we knew that we need to be accessing primary and we have to be inspiring people at an early age. And then we knew that computing science isn't taught at every school. So we thought, well, let's do annual competitions, a way that pupils, it doesn't matter if you've got a computer or not, can still get engaged in computing science and have a reward from it. So we've got a, a Christmas competition out now as well, open to everybody and um, prizes up for grabs. And then we thought, well, what else can we do? So we've got a cyber advent calendar as well. So this is an annual thing. Pretty much everything I do, I started and I didn't really think it turned out to be anything. I really just done it for my class and then put it out to everybody. Um, but we had 16,000 pupils take part in that last year. And so it's going to be out on the 1st of December. But again, same thing from primary and secondary. It's so important that we had that. And then again, thought, right, well, what else can we do? So we knew that at award ceremonies, and if you've ever been to award ceremony in um, a school that doesn't have these awards yet, you'll know that computing science doesn't have their own award. It's pretty standard. You'll have like best person in music, best person in PE, English, but then all the other awards you have to like kind of fight against all the other subjects. And I just thought that that's really daft. So I was like, do you know what? We're going to make our own awards. So, so we've got two awards that we give out um, free for every secondary school in Scotland. They're, we've got JP Morgan logo on them as well. So really emphasising that point that it's an important award and it's something that hopefully parents would recognise that, you know, that, that's a tech company supporting an award and they're just stunning. You're, they're not your traditional, you know, <laughs> shields. They're solid bit of glass, like they're beautiful. So we've got a Hopper Award and a Turing Award, one for best um, female, one for best male. We knew, obviously, we could put out one award, but we knew that statistically you would only get 20% of females. So we thought, no, we're making it a deliberate choice. Um, and then again, we thought, right, well, we need to get primary involved as well. So we do actually continue this um, all the way from primary, from nursery right up to P7, so creating that pipeline. But like, this is just everything I do in my spare time, um, and I've always done in my spare time. But then let's get on to stacks. So Stacks is currently my job. Um, so I'm co-lead of Stacks along with my colleague Brendan McCart. And it's, Stacks stands for Scottish Teachers Advancing Computing Science. And it's honestly probably the most exciting thing that's ever happened. <laughs> um, so it's a Scottish government funded project for five years. And we're based at the University of Glasgow. This came out directly from the Mark Logan report who recognised that pipeline problem and recognised early on that you know a, a big issue lays at secondary schools. So it was amazing to have government really back this and think, well, like respond to it directly and create this organisation. So it's fantastic to have. So the first thing that we done was make it a central hub for computing science. So something that didn't exist before for computing science teachers with just one place that everybody can go and they know that it's reliably updated and it has got everything you need for a computing teacher. So if you've got any teachers or you know any teachers, it's got the pedagogy, the curriculum plans, classroom tools, videos, and so on, like everything that you need. And then if you do know, um, teachers want resources. <laughs> so I'll get onto that a bit in a minute. But like I said, there's only two of us. But it was so important for us to make sure that we're continuing to hear the voice of people in the classroom. So we've got this incredible set of individuals who all are computing teachers. We've also got um, the computing lead from the SQA as well, because we know that that's a core part, obviously, of the curriculum. And they help shape the direction of Stacks. So everything we do, we run past them and make sure that we're you know, hitting the mark, whether it's impacting teachers, which ultimately impacts pupils as well. And then resources is the one thing teachers cry out for all the time, so we've done that. So we gave them over 250 hours of computing science resources for BGE. Now that's more access than any pupil gets in BGE. <laughs> but it's not about stacks saying that, you know, here you go, you must teach this. It's nothing about that. It's about empowering the teaching community and, and helping them 
and letting them choose and create a tailor-made curriculum that's best for their pupils because teachers, they know their kids best. All the resources that we've made as well, it's not just that they're shiny new resources. They've all got the 12 principles of teaching computing science embedded throughout them as well. So it is research-based. We're also as well leaning into the whole, um, you know, linking with real world scenarios. So we've got um, opportunities like from Scottish Power are in there as well. We've got like a charity, um, Smile in West Lothian, and really leaning into that tech for good side. And then we knew that computing isn't always taught by a computing science teacher, so we had to ensure we were supporting them. So what we've started to do is all of our resources have got the common misconceptions and teacher prompts throughout because delivering a subject that isn't your own is really hard. So we needed to help them. And what we started to do as well is going to the universities that deliver, like train up business teachers and making sure that they're aware that this is here for them and they can use it to help them. And then the gender gap. So you've seen it as a huge, right? And it's an area that I'm so passionate about. So everything that we've done, all the resources, so they've got gender neutral language throughout, they've got teamwork, they've got, again, links to real world scenarios, tech for good, purely because that's what the research says really inspires and helps inspire pupils. So we've made sure that that's throughout everything. And then of course, having female role models all the way throughout with it, making sure that awareness is there from day one. And then bringing teachers together on this issue, because it's a common issue shared by everybody. You know, even the schools who are doing good, like they would love to do better. So it's trying to bring that opportunity of teachers, bringing them together and sharing ideas and connecting, but also reassuring them, if you've only got one or two girls in your class, that's actually normal. <laughs> you know, like keep them, nurture them. And, and I think knowing that makes teachers feel a lot better because a lot of the time it's really hard to connect with another teacher. So we're trying to establish that. And then the pupil experience obviously has an impact on the uptake. So what we're starting to do is a national upskilling programme so this is currently running as well, and it's like three nights a week um, on all the different areas of computing science. It's teachers teaching teachers, it's fully interactive, and it's ran currently by these amazing individuals. So we've got 15 tutors this year from 12 schools across both independent and public across nine councils. Now these aren't just any computing teachers, they are genuinely like some of the best teachers that we've got in the country. They are SQ markers, the SQ writers, vetters, principal assessors, and that's important for what we're trying to do. So all of our upskilling, it isn't just over picking something randomly. The SQ produce a report every year saying what areas as a country aren't like done very well. And so what we've done and what these tutors have done is taken their time, we've totally went through it, analysed everything, and we're taking those parts and we're delivering upskilling courses for all the teachers across the country. And then of course, more importantly, imparting those key um, knowledge from the SQA markers and things across the country. And then the way computing is, like, you know, there's schools across everywhere in the country, like from like up in the Highlands, Aberdeen and so on. So running online events is crucial that we do that to get that um, access. Because if we ran only face to face, we wouldn't always get everybody. So we also run a um, knowledge sharing network and having that connections and making sure that teachers know they're not alone and being part of a community and inspiring each other and learning from each other. But like I say, the virtual events are so important as well. So we did run a virtual festival, our first one last year, um, and it was a complete sell out, sell out, which was amazing. Now, all of these interventions and um, things that we're doing all feed into a learning link directory. It's essentially like a yellow pages for computing science teachers. <laughs> so it's basically, if you have been a speaker or if you have run an event or whatever, you get added to this, this um, learning link directory. And it means that if you are a single person department, you've got someone that you know is, is willing to respond and answer, but also highlighting the areas of their strengths and where they're happy to share. But you saw the numbers. We're seven away from having the lowest amount of teachers we have ever had in computing science. That's worrying, really worrying. And it's something that we really need to ensure that we're nurturing that talent and making sure that all computing science teachers know how special and amazing they are and what contributions they're making to their individual classroom. Now I've taught for like 11 years and I know how hard it is some days to not realize that you're making a difference. But we are making sure that we're telling those teachers that they are making a difference. 
So what we're doing is we've started to run a Meet the Professionals um, event. So this is basically bringing the new teachers who are graduating, the, the number 26 of them, <laughs> um, bringing all the 26 of them to an event where they can meet other computer and science teachers who have been in the profession. And again, just making those valuable connections because they genuinely might up, end up in a school that there's only one or two people in it. We've made sure that we've got Computer and Science Awards, recognising that excellence in there as well. And then the recruitment is an issue. So the University of Glasgow are exploring the idea of braided careers, but also um, they've got a new undergraduate course coming. So hoping to inspire people, shaping them in and being like, coming to computer and teaching, it's really good. Um, so we're trying to work with them and support that as well. We have also contacted the universities across Scotland to see whether they want us there to, to champion and say, like, come be a computing teacher, because although it's hard, it's really good, and we only need 26. So we feel like we need to try and do something. And then every year we've got a, like a national um, thank a teacher, like it's a celebrated date. So Stacks are making sure that we are celebrating that, not just by a one-off message going, oh, you're amazing, by an individual personal message to all of our members. So like I said, it's only two of us. And we've only been up and running for about 19 months. And the website itself has only been up and running for 12 months. So you might be thinking, well, who are your members? So we've got 70% of secondary schools in Scotland, 77 independent <coughs> schools in Scotland, 77%, I should say, and 80% of all computing science teachers in Scotland. And we've had significant interest from other countries. So Stacks itself, like for, for the government who funded it, I mean, that it's amazing. Like, what, the, what we've managed to do, only two of us, <laughs> in such a short space of time, like the interest is there, but it's not going to be solved in five years. Like you've seen the figures. Now there are so many other people in this space doing great work and like just a wee shout out to them. And what Stacks have done as well, eh, sorry, Dresscode have done as well, is we've created a big tech directory. So it's just putting everything, like all these people working in this space that in one space that you can kind of filter and find things as well. So if you are doing something amazing individually or something as a, a company or whatever you want to be added to that, let us know. But we really need industry and we need to work in partnership. So we know that inspiring pupils at every age and every stage is so important. It's not good enough to just, you know, a one-off thing in S2 and hope for the best. And we know that industry do great work on like individual things, such as like careers talks or, you know, attending an open evening. And individual events can be so inspiring. But what Stacks want to do is we want to create a series of targeted interventions at every age and every stage. And that can be transformative. And that is what we need for Scotland. Because you've seen those figures. If we continue at that pace of getting 200 people every four years, we're not going to be at the figure that we are until 2100. <laughs> Nobody's going to live to see it in this room. And like, I laugh, but genuinely makes me quite sad. Like, I want to see that. I want to live to see that. So it's not a future problem we're talking about. It is a now problem. Now, although the status, and I suppose at the very start, it is really sobering, but I'm hugely optimistic. And like I said at the start, I mean, when I was chatting, it's like, we're a massive underdog and everybody loves an underdog, you know? And so it's going to make a great movie <laughs> when we solve this. So I'm hugely optimistic that we can do this as a country. But what we need to answer as a country is do we really want to restore the subject? And we need to seriously answer that and follow that through. But thanks very much. Wow. At Absolutely fabulous. Um, absolutely fabulous. So I want to firstly thank you, Tony, not just for your talk, because that was amazing, but for yourself being an inspirational role model. Thank you. And doing all of that amazing hard work. I know with other people, but unbelievable. Um, and yeah, working with people to inspire not just young women, but all people to move forward. So we've got a short time for questions before we go for lunch. There will be some microphones coming around. Can we start off with this lady at the back here? Hello. Um, so I just wanted to yeah, thank you for this great speech and also for the great work you're doing. Thank you. Um, so I'm a fresh graduate out of uni. So I finished high school in 2019. Um, the messaging from my career service was that um, you shouldn't need to do computer science at advanced higher or higher. You should be doing maths instead because mm -hmm. 
computing like degrees, they'd rather you have like a fresh kind of kind of blank slate, as it were. So, um, is that still the messaging now, four years later? And also, what are you doing to address that kind of messaging? Yeah, it's um, it's heartbreaking. That do you want to be a computing teacher? <laughs> this is my first question to you. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> But it's one of those, um, yeah, I think, unfortunately, as I think it is the case that that message is still getting through. Um, so the way that careers advice usually goes, you know, there's usually a career person in the school, but then I know even when they've done subject choices, you typically go to, like, it's senior managers and, and guidance teachers in the hall. Um, but we've had kids who are smashing, like, they're amazing, and we're like, you'll be great at higher and advanced. And then they come up and they're like, oh, yeah, I wasn't allowed to pick it. And, and it's, it's really hard, and it's one of those things, I think, if the kid doesn't have a champion on their side, like a parent or whoever, and I think a lot of the time for, for parents as well, you'll hear the school's advice and you think, oh, well, they're right, they know best. Um, so if you don't have a champion on their side to say, actually, no, <laughs> my kid is doing it, they love it, they, they want to do it, and, and inspire them and encourage them, um, yeah, it's really difficult. Like we, we, I know as a department, we sent people back down <laughs> and we were like, fix this. Um, but yeah, on a national level, uh, like it's one of those, it's a minefield to try and encourage. What, what we do have coming um, is we've got a Choose Computing Science site coming. So for me, I think the two biggest barriers is, is access and awareness. Um, and so we've got a Choose Computing Science site coming just for parents to, to let them try and inform parents on a national level. So I think trying to fix it on a school by school basis is really, really difficult. And it is conversations we've raised. Um, and I know Skills Develop in Scotland as well have raised it, but we are also trying to do a thing, I suppose, for everybody. So no real easy answer, um, but no, it's not gotten better, I'm afraid. I'm so sorry you've got that. Yeah, well, thank you for the question. And if you would like to join, that will be one down 25 <laughs> yeah. to go. Um, we had a couple of questions in the middle here, and then we'll move to this gentleman, so we start on this way, work our way through. See, we thought we weren't getting questions. I know, I know. Lunch. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> uh, thank you for a very good talk. I was wondering um, more specifically what industry can be doing. How can we be helping out? What actions can we be taking now to try and address this? Yeah, so I've got a wish list. <laughs> so if, any, if anybody genuinely wants it, I literally have got a list of like 140 things that that hasn't been done in Scotland, and there's so many opportunities for, for industry. So, like, a big thing, like, I suppose, to rhyme a few, is, like, work experience, insight days, um, getting teachers in as well. So, see, even letting teachers run, like, a department meeting in your company, like, it's only an hour. But what happens there is teachers get so inspired and excited. Um, but then what we want to do is go further than that. So, th this is really, like, quite nerdy, but in, in Scotland, in first year, you, you learn about variables, typically, right? But I know that that happens, like people in industry use variables in their day-to-day -day life. That's awesome that a 12-year-old is learning something that's happening in the industry. So what we want to do is try and create a series of videos that can be weaved into the curriculum and played at the start of topics, going like, I work in Barclays, blah, blah, blah. Um, I use variables, by the way. You're learning about variables, like have a great time. But it's more than that as well. You know, I know this, like just by being a teacher, if you speak to kids, they typically don't know what, any company is, unless it's like Microsoft or Apple, really. So what we really want to do is, again, leaning into that role model thing of going like, my name's Tony, I'm from Midlothian, I went to St. David's High School, and, and I'm learning about variables, whatever. But what that does is kids recognise like Midlothian, or they recognise like the school and they go, oh, and they love their job. And, you know, and so it, it creates that snowball, but nobody's doing it for any subject so we want to be the first <laughs> so and so we've got a list if anybody wants to where, be where can we access that list just so we oh, know. Oh, email me I'll, I'll give it to anybody right there we go <laughs> there we go yeah um there were questions in the middle here hi um so we've seen the decline in the number of people entering that particular field but where are they going yeah, it's a good question, isn't it? What are so we competing against? How do we destroy the enemy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's a great question. So in schools, um, it does vary. Like, so if anybody's a parent, you'll see that you, you have your subject choices and you're in columns. So you only have to pick, like, I think it's like six or something in fifth year. But two of them are English and math, so they're gone. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> but, but then it is that thing of like, who are you competing against? And it gets pretty rivalry. Like in our school, we were like, right, <laughs> like what's going on? So, um, but again, it's that thing of if you're a single person department, it's really hard 
So I suppose the good news, what we've got coming, is um, because stacks exist, we've paid for a graphic designer to create like the best stuff and trying to get that out like graphically out to um, schools. So if you've ever been to a career fair and stuff, options even in science get out, they're like really cool stuff, right? It's really hard to compute with science. They just like create a flame and kids want to take it. <laughs> um, but then other subjects as well, like we need to be as cool as that. And so we've got a graphic designer creating stuff and putting out um, careers postcards and things. So so we are trying trying to do that. But honestly, we're, we're open to anything. So I don't know if anybody saw the rocket in Glasgow. Did anybody see that? Honestly, I can't believe nobody saw it. There was an actual rocket in Glasgow, right? <laughs> and what was cool about it is um, they actually had all these careers postcards of going, um, do you want to be an artist? You can be a space artist. Do you like vets? You can be a space vet. And it was amazing. So accessible. Just basic language. It was brilliant. So I've tried to recreate that for the tech sector. Going, like, do you want to be a CEO? Like, you know, do this. Do you, do you like art? Become a graphic user. You know, whatever. So um, we're, we are creating stuff and getting stuff out there. But, um, but you're right, we need to crush the enemy. <laughs> Everybody, <laughs> everybody who's not an optional subject. So uh, yeah, it's hard. But again, I'm open to any ideas. We've got um, three years, about three years left to try and just do as much as we can. So yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. And um, gentleman here. Um, thank you. Hi, Tony. Hi. Great to meet you. Great <laughs> talk. I'm Andrew Rendell. We've interacted quite a bit. Great to meet you at last. Um, I'd like to get the 144, because yeah. I might want to add a few oh, to please, it. Oh, please, please. Yeah. Uh, but a specific question. Has there been any discussion about the name of the subject? Yeah. Do you think the name of the subject is right? To me, it, computing science, computer science, it sounds a bit... Yeah. From the 60s, from the 70s? Uh -huh. a, lot, a lot of kids have picked the subject and are like, oh, I thought it was science on a computer, you know, and then they're pretty disappointed. And so... Um, but yeah, there, there has been discussion around that. It's one of those things, like, we don't have the power to change. But because there is the educational reform happening, there is an opportunity, though. Um, and there was a study done in America, and what they realised is, like, you know, anybody who's in computing knows that it's such a creative subject. Um, but kids don't sort of realise that. So what we've done with the resources that we've made, we've, we've made sure that, like, creative is in the title. So, like, creative computing science, or, you know, like, trying to really lean into that. Yeah. Um, and not just call it computing science. But, but like you say, it's something that it needs looked at. Not that it's like the answer, but it's something that needs looked at. We do have an opportunity. Um, it's like, what would we call it? Like tech, I don't know. Um, so yeah, uh, there's definitely chat going on, whether we'll, we'll be able to change it. But yeah, send your ideas and we'll just put a petition. <laughs> Amazing, thank you. We've got time for one more question. Is there one more question? There's one at the back, would you mind? Oh, thank you for an intercept. We'll thank have two you. questions. <laughs> <laughs> My question is about the beginning of, of your presentation. Yes. Yeah. Why it is such a decline? And also, maybe you have idea comparing to, to other sciences, because in physics, chemistry, math, it, it was yeah. also like, uh, like but why, why such a decline yeah. happened from 2001? Um, so I think the comparing with STEM, like science isn't, um, STEM, when you talk about the sciences, computing actually isn't declared as a science. <laughs> so in schools, typically going back to that course option choice, you have to also pick like one or two sciences in S1 and S2 and S3, but computing isn't counted as a science, which is annoying. <laughs> so um, so again, like we're, we're battling that, I suppose, going back to who do we need to compete with. Um, and then the decline, the decline's a really interesting one. So if you look like, and I've got this data from like 1986, um, or right up to the present day, every time there's been a change in the curriculum, there's been a drop in numbers. So that's no real surprise. Like I've lived through some of those changes and I know how hard it is because you just get a list of, here's the changes. By the way, you need to implement them next year. But you get, no, like that's it. Then you're kind of left to your own devices. So you have to recreate the full curriculum again and then going back to, if we've only got one or two people in a department, it's, it's really, really hard. So what we've seen from the data is every year there's been a change in the curriculum, there's been a drop in teacher numbers. And so that's, I suppose, something we need to be very wary of as a country because we've got this reform, com reform coming up. We're only nine teachers away already. And if the curriculum changes and we make the same mistake of not actually providing the resources to help teachers, I think we're just going to be in huge trouble. Thank you. And then just very finally, the gentleman at the back, if that's OK. Hi. Um, so we are similar to his question, uh, you had the timeline from sort of the early 2000s to now of the decline mm -hmm. of computer sciences. In the early 2000s, families still didn't have home computers. Computer cl Computing class was yep. the only way for a lot of people to actually get access to computing and stuff. Yep. Now we have smartphones and every kid c gets one. Do you think that's a p 
possible. Oh yeah, big time. Like um, I think kids who are really switched on like that, you can like I could literally make something on my phone right now and then put it out to the world. Like that's that's awesome. But then like that, you go into a classroom and you you can't get at, you're making a website on a notepad. Like you know, and so it's that that thing I think kids have definitely got a, a really good experience or like access outside but then it's almost like you go back in time when you go back in the classroom so that kind of leads back to the pupil experience so why would you pick it um, and then that as well with you don't need to pick it <laughs> which is is really really uh, depressing um, but yeah so I think I think that is part to part to play of it yeah well, thank you very much. Um, right, I'm going to challenge all of you to think about how you can help Tony and contact her and to make a real difference. Let's make a change in this room. <laughs> My email address is tony.scullion at dresscode.org.uk. Get in touch. I'm yeah. sure Tony will be around for the rest of the day, but I'm sure you want to join with me for thanking her to inspire and change the world. <laughs>